Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we go from now until uh, um, one o- to midnight or something like that. What, what, wait, what, what, are you, what are you doing? What, what, what is that? What is that? You're not even near the microphone. What are you going to... Well, what are you complaining about well, now? What, what? What are you complaining about now? No, I'm not complaining. Don't get me off my... I had one of the best days of my life today. It was just picture perfect. Unknowing that we've had winter up until two days ago, yeah, um, where we've had heat. Today was in the well, how high did it get in the eighties, right? Something, something Somewhere like in the eighties. Yeah, it was really nice. Listen to my day. I went to the gym. Yeah. Then I went to get my hair colored. Yeah. Then I walked up Madison, bought two pairs of shoes. Yeah. Continued to walk up Madison and met a girlfriend for lunch. And then, because I was carrying so much, I took a bus home instead of walking home. But it was just wonderful. Really? Yeah, it was my mental health day. Hey, up your And seat. I feel great. Oh, really? Yes. And you it feel a, terrific. Yeah, it was a great day. All right, that's good. I didn't that, do any that, chores. I just did everything for me. I don't know. Your, your camera's color is off. But I, I, I don't care. You, you can look as bland as I want you to look. Whatever. I don't care. Let me see here. Let me go to the. That was my screen. day. That was your 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 day. Well, it was it was a beautiful day today. Yeah, you, know? you finally got outside. Yeah. See how colorful I am, and you're. Well, it's also because you're wearing gray and everything too. You know. How's this with that? No, no, that's that's that hasn't hasn't got color either. This, what do you what do you here? You should wear something with color. Look at that! You've got no wonder you've got four shirts there. Wouldn't it well, be nice? Well, it's a different to, shirt I put on to, every night. To put them in the wash once in a while. Because I don't wear them out anywhere. Doesn't matter. It's I, still I gets wear them full, here on the it air. It still gets full of your bacteria oh, the, the, and it, sweat. The arguments start again. <laughs> so it begins. And so it begins. And so it continues. I can't get the two cameras balanced tonight. So what? Oh. What do you care? I care. I mean, really. I care. Well, I care. Because it's Friday. It's Friday. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna start having you on on Thursdays. You're gonna sing. It's Thursday. No, it's Thursday. I have to get up so early. Ba, 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 ba. So anyway, so you you had. Uh, I had a great personal because day for me. It, because it was a me day today. Yeah, that meant without me. Yes. And and most days are without me. Well, I work, but most nights no, but, are with you. Oh yeah, sure. Well, you, you decide to watch, uh, what do you call it? Binge watch something that I'm not interested the in. The only so I one to... that I have to admit that was pushing it was the 50 episode of the Turkish 56 episodes. episodes of the Turkish soap opera that I got involved in and watched all of it. That was just so that you, you, you do that as a method of keeping yourself away from me. Well, and your point is? And that's my point. What is my that point, point? exactly, but it's my point. <laughs> I see we're both wearing our Friday night gear. Yeah, well, I got this is mine. mine. There's mine. And here's yeah, mine. mine. Can you see mine? Yeah. It's mine. Yeah. So, anyway. So, uh, um, so I had a great day. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And so, tomorrow, it's supposed to be just as nice. Sunday, it's going to get colder and rain. And we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have lunch with uh, Jack and Natalia. And Natalia. Yeah. yeah. By the way, the the uh, the uh, uh, interview with Jack just went great. over sensationally. Yeah. And there's another one on Tuesday. So people now, if anyone look wants to, to see the first one, they just go to your page. Go to the Facebook page and, and look go for down a bit. It's, April 11th. It, yeah, look for the Jack Garfine. It's down. It'll say down, April 11th. Yeah. So. Or you can go over to YouTube. It's over there too. It's over YouTube, and it's at your net. It's at your your website but it, it's, it's on not? gabnet no no yeah, no really no why well i mean it's there if you go down to the show on the 11th on the on demand oh i see yeah 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 that's for the video or for the audio either way 
Uh, but it, uh, yeah, no, it, it really had to, got a lot of people watching. So I, I'm hoping I can get him in to do the, the second uh, part right. of his life. Because it's just... It's, it's fascinating. This is interesting in one way. Concentration camps always are. And when you listen to this, you'll understand. I yeah. have a girlfriend, Anne, yeah. that, that is addicted to concentration camps and, and, and the Jews and, and World War II, yeah. that whole well, part of it. Did she listen to it? No, no, I have to tell her. Oh, you have to tell her about well, it. Well, you just posted it. It's just all recent. Wait a minute, I posted it. It was three days ago. Well, I have an email. I, mean, I have an email. I'll do it tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you let me out early, I'll do it now. Yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> and and what, <laughs> she, what does she bitch at me about? I'll tell you what she bitches at me about. She goes, you walk like an old man. You're well, hunched does. over. he does. He yeah. does. Well, you know what? When you get out of bed in the morning, I say to myself, I'm fucking married you, to an old lady. You know something? I totally agree with you. To a because, little old lady. Wait a minute. Oh, I, yeah. You've got an excuse my, for you. Yeah. Let me just I totally agree with you. Getting out of bed because of my back issues is just so painful. But only for the first two or three steps. After that, I'm oh, fine. Oh, I don't know that that's oh, the case. Oh, yes, you I do. see you walking around the house kind of schlumping. Not like you, mister. You know? And then when you sleep, you know, I'm looking at you, and you know, all the stuff is shoved up into your face and stuff. And, what you stuff? Know, when you're sleeping, it's just nobody looks great sleeping. You were snoring last night. I meant what? to tell Again? you. Again? Yeah, yeah. Again? Yeah. And loud. Loud? I took all the pillows off of you. I moved all the pillows. You were just like flat down. The but then did I stop? Yeah, I kind of, I guess so. I mean, I left the room. Oh. <laughs> because I haven't snored in a long time. You snored about a, couple, about a week or so. No, no, it's so much better. It's, believe me, the once or twice that you do it, it's fine. Yeah. I can live with that. Yeah. It was before. <laughs> it was every But anyway, night. I look at you sleeping and I go, my God, I'm married to an old lady. Well, you're the oldest man I've ever Got the old, with. oldest woman I've ever been involved. So with. there, you know, even 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 well, of course, even the youngest one that I ever was going out with is in her fifties now. So <laughs> you know, uh, and she was I was twenty five years her senior, twenty six years her senior. No, well, you see where that got you. <laughs> yeah, that got me nowhere. <laughs> got you heartache. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, she should be. And most women should be as lucky to look as good as you look at your age. Thank you. Which is 87, I'll ladies take and gentlemen, it. I'll right take there, 87. Any compliment I can get from huh? this man, because he does not give them. I mean, I don't give you compliments. You don't give compliments. Yes, I do. Well, just now you did, and thank you very much. I mean, I really I mean, do. sometimes I see you coming home from work, I mean, you're wearing something, and I go, that looks great. In your mind, you might say it. I say it to you. No, you don't. No, you don't you listen. Don't, you don't listen. You don't, you don't listen. You don't listen. I've got arthritis hey, right here. Hey, it's ten thirteen. I get cramps in my feet it's now. It's ten thirteen. And and and, and got, do you know where your children and are? And I've got cramps in my hands. Oh, here we go. I've got cramps in my hands, but only, the Alex Bennett medical update. Only when I need some music only, for the update. Only Alex. when I'm lying down. It's something in my back. I don't well, know. the nerve in your top of your spine and your neck goes down. Goes yeah. down your arm. At the lower part, it goes down the leg. I have the leg issue. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you get cramps there. No, I get shooting pains. Oh well, I get cramps. No, I get cramps sometimes. Yeah. Too, so but... we're, we're sitting here, just both of us looking at each other, saying, "Which one's going to croak first? That's really what this is all. I about. met my cousin Mimi the other day for lunch. I haven't seen her in a while. Yeah. And we sat down at the table. And, and you talk medicine. Yes. I mean, I. I yeah. That's all we, we talked about, our illnesses. She had a hip replacement last year. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're, our, we're at that last, yeah. that last exit. <laughs> yeah. Ding, ding, the fight is on, says Mike Allen. Hey, Mike Allen. And uh, Louise Zeitlin says, you're beautiful, Marjorie. Uh, thanks, Louise. But so kind. How does she know? I don't think she's a lesbian. Alex. Anyway, you're not a lesbian. Do you ever you ever get into a lesbian thing? I never ask you this. No, I yeah. mean I've had I've had in two separate occasions where women were very interested in me, and one was at the gym, and my girlfriend had to tell me she would come put her mat between my girlfriend and I, and I didn't see it. And then there was another time that that it happened, and I didn't see it. Either. No, but you've never had a, a, no, sex no, with a woman. No, no, no. Have you had sex I, I was, with a man? No, I mean I had a guy blow me once. Right. Yeah. 
Well, then you uh, had sex with the man. Well, no, I, I, I was getting blown. It was an orgy. And what? I was getting blown, and I looked down, and it was a guy, and I said, well, it feels good. <laughs> That's know? considered sex. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Uh, according, to, according to Albert, that makes me gay. The fact that, <laughs> that, that, that Oh, happened. I'm so happy that he called last week. Albert, if this you're, week. This week. Albert, if you're listening, call. I want to talk to you. Yeah. Call in the first half an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I um, mean, I so you said so you never had a real, no. I never had a no. I've never had really had sex with a guy except for that incident. Yeah, I, I mean, I yeah. never. Had, there were women interested in me, but I, you know, went right over my head. There I was a time where I was curious, and I thought I would, you know, I guess I was, you know, this was during the when I was about thirty, and I would, you know, everybody was free with sexually, and I was doing midnight blue, and I thought, you know, I might be interesting, but I never could find a guy. That you'd be interested in. That looked in. enough like a woman for me to <laughs> want to have sex with them. I've had girl crushes on women. Yeah. You know, where I think they're beautiful or this or well, their personality, whatever. I've, I mean, major crushes. Yeah. But nothing in a sense that I wanted to fuck them. Yeah. Not well, that. Yeah, I have to admit it. I'm a hot for Phil Meyer. So. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you, it. You knew it. You just yeah. knew it. I'm hot it, for it, Phil it, Meyer. It, it, Phil, are you listening? But, you know. Is it a feel-free night tonight? It's a feel-free night tonight. Oh, it's a feel-free. It's a feel-free to call. He's out uh, doing some kind of scuba diving meeting or oh. something. 1016. Because he's still scuba dives. We we did all of it. I had a I had four what six guys on last night, all on the thing, right? And I asked this question: How many of you have ever peed in a pool? I have. And every one of them said they. Yeah, have. and women too. Because you hit the wall, cold water. Yeah, but there was something. When we were growing up, we were told that they put this stuff in the pool, and if you Chlorine. pee... No, no, well, if, if you pee, it, no. it would turn, like, green a circle around you. Yeah. So that was, like, the thing that you were always afraid of. No, they never did that. There they never, never did it, anything. but they said they did it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, so I... I uh, they, every, every guy said... Oh, you yeah. were going to read the... Um... Oh, I get it. Let me go get it. Yeah, this is this is great. I, there is a show called. Well, there, well he does it for all shows. his shows. Yeah, yeah he does. Uh, there's a, there's Young Sheldon. There's uh, the uh, a Big Bang Theory. Uh, there's uh, Mom. I think that's about it for the shows that Ch Chuck Lorre. But does. in the past, he's done big ones. Uh, it too. also did uh, you know Two and a Half Men, and uh, what he did was he at the end of his show instead of saying you know Chuck Lorre production whatever, he would have something he wrote. So they called, in called the early little... days, it was pretty hard for people when he was doing his, some of his early shows to really read these things because they'd have to do, put do them on videotape pause. and then pause, pause them. It. And then you have to kind of squint because, you know, the picture wasn't that great and whatever. But now that you have... Television. You can cable. freeze frame. Yeah. So I freeze frame them. And by the way, if you want to read his whole... Everything he's ever written, okay... On these, what he calls vanity cards. Vanity cards. Uh, his website. It, it, you, you go to it, just go type in vanity cards. Yeah. And or, says, or his name. And then, Chuck Lorre. Or Ch Chuck Laurie, L O R E. And uh, he has these things he writes. And I, every week when I watch these shows, I freeze frame them. It used it. to be he used to do a different one for, for every show. show. Yeah. And now he does one each week for, for all, all the, the shows. shows. Because, and I don't blame him. Yeah. Here so was, read this one. Here was the one for this This is what week. he left me to read this morning. Yeah. His, this is what he wrote. Uh, Chuck Lorre Productions, uh, number 586. Uh, Arise, dirt bags. Step out from the shadows and stand proudly in the sunlight. Your craven misdeeds and unholy crimes matter no more. Every lie, every cheat, and every betrayal has been forgiven. From the pulpits across the land, your corruption has been sanctified. Go forth and behave despicably, and fear not the wrath of those you harm. In fact, accuse them of your crimes. Assign to them your slimy motives. And if all else fails, have your lawyers destroy them. Oh yes, dirtbags, it's a new world. It's your world. Squat down and defecate on it. <laughs> That's great. Th that is the best one he ever wrote. That's great. You're going to have that. You can take that Thank with you, you to work. You want to take it to work. Yeah, You're going to pin it up in the rec room or something, right? Or in the break room. 
no, it's, it's, it, he, it, those things, if you ever watch any of those shows, just uh, freeze frame that last, that last deal. Sometimes uh, 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 certain people who make recordings of it cut them off, and I don't. So I, I go online and read them every week to make sure I, I can, you know, read them. But go, go to, uh, just put in vanity cards. And that it'll get yeah, you there. Yeah, and they're great. They're really great. They're really good and timely. They're really good. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about all our uh, news lately? Well, the you latest see, is see, the thing is she is so addicted to the news now. I did the same thing for Watergate. I absolutely yeah, was but, but glued. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Let and me my finish. boss went on to be first prosecuted but, under Cox and then Jawaski. But how we're 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 mo moving apart, and we have really nothing left in common is that I really can't stand watching the news anymore. Well, I go through periods of news, but I'm glued to this because I want to see them burn. <laughs> I, want to, I watch the whole Watergate. I mean, you become addicted to it. It's true. Well, I mean, what's going on is... It, it's, it's, it's high drama. You can't make this up. You, no, you can't. You make can't. It. You can't make it up. Uh, but um, there, there is now a third woman that they paid money to. Who, yeah, who was pregnant. Who was Somebody pregnant, was but pregnant. didn't have the kid. I had an abortion. Had an abortion. And he paid her, I a think, a million and a something. half dollars, something yeah. like that. But this wasn't this wasn't a prior to the election, so that can't be used against him because that could not be considered a contribution. Well, that's the question. Yeah. You know, it, you know it, it's in-kind money and, you know, it was never declared. And it's been more than one. They say that he's more worried about this than he is about the Russian probe. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard. Well, I mean, he, uh, he said, oh, but the best part was today. Now, here, here's the best part, okay? Comey writes his book, okay? <laughs> now, I got to tell you, people, people who do television uh, don't ever really get to say certain words, okay? So if somehow the president says them, they're, they're repeatable. Although they, they did, uh, they were reluctant to say shithole. I mean, S dot dot right, dot. Right, right. Right? But whenever, if, the, if they can use the word, <laughs> did say they will. So here is Comey. George Stephanopoulos interviewing James Comey about his book, uh, uh, which is uh, being released today, I think. And. Um, Comey is telling him that he told him that the so-called Steele dossier um, may really exist uh, and that uh, there are things that the Russians can accuse him of. Or blackmail him. Yeah, uh, such as uh, being in a room full of prostitutes peeing on each other. <laughs> and he's, he repeated it and, about and, three and Comey, times. Comey said peeing on each other and maybe even by virtue of splash on him. <laughs> and he said... I don't know, but it Russian, could be the, true. <laughs> and, and the Russians have videotaped this, and it can be used against you, so you're, you're, you could be a, a very much a security risk, so you better make sure that this didn't happen. And he said, well, don't ever tell anybody this, because my wife would get really mad. <laughs> right? So he was using his wife as the excuse why it shouldn't be released. But supposedly, I mean, all the all the news guys, major news guys, now this bold. Oh, oh, ping, ping. I love what Lester Holt said. And if you have any children, have them go away. You may, right now. you may want to. Yeah, because yeah. of the uh, of They're the material here. Well, mature you know, material. If a little kid, a little toddler, you have doesn't know what the word "p" means. <laughs> yeah, then you got a problem. However, they were <laughs> using the term on uh, TMZ, "golden showers." Yeah. And uh, if a little kid heard that, they would go, where can I get a golden well, shower? Well, I was I saying was... to Alex before, I said there's going to be a lot of teenage boys looking up a golden See, showers golden in showers. Google. Yeah. <laughs> but they were, go they were going crazy today. Literally crazy today. It's like they... they... Because they got to say, say P. The, yeah, P. Because, because Comey said P, so they had to quote him. And he said it three times. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he repeated it. Yeah, absolutely, he repeated it. And, That's funny. Uh, you know that was it, it, so it was a it was a good day that way. Yeah. But we have a president now who likes to either get peed on or watch people pee on each other. They say our footing in the in the, in the world is like 
almost non-existent, that we were the ones that at least well, maintain um, a strong foot and, and help other countries. Assist would, you, other. would you, however, hold it against Trump? I mean, you have a lot of things you're going to hold against Trump, right? You know, you, you, we have tons of stuff we can hold against Trump. But would you um, hold against him the fact that he maybe got peed on by Russian hookers? No, but he couldn't handle it. Huh? He he would be the one that couldn't handle it. Yeah, but I'm saying I don't mind. Would, if, if would, would that would that bother you? Wouldn't bother me because it, it wasn't I mean, happening to me. And it certainly wouldn't bother all those uh, all those uh, uh, church going people out there because apparently they're excusing him for all his other behavior. Yeah, yeah. As long as they put yeah. the right judges. But, I mean, in. I don't care if he has such certain, hypocrites, certain sexual peccadilloes. Okay, uh, but there are a lot of people who do. And to those people who are so righteous and Christian and so on, how do you feel about a president that likes to be, watch people get peed on and maybe perhaps got peed on himself? Yeah. And the Russians have videotapes of it. <laughs> I mean, if you're wondering why he's been so nice to Putin. Of late, he hasn't been. In the last week, he hasn't well, been. Well, I think maybe he got permission from Putin. I think that's for um, midterm elections. I think he talked to Putin and said, look, I, I've got to, in order to keep this charade going, I've got to, like, throw some raw meat to the public about he, you. He called Cohen yesterday. He, he, today? Yeah, was it today? today? I thought today. it was last night. He, he, the one thing his lawyer said, don't do, don't call Cohen. Don't call, yeah. don't call your lawyer. The lawyer telling him, don't call your lawyer. And he called him anyway, you know, uh, which is not a good idea. Not a good idea. Uh, you know, if I worked for this president, I would be apoplectic now. He doesn't listen to anybody, does he? Mm -mm. You know. Um, now, by the way, let me mention something to people because they, they, I've gotten a lot of questions lately about where can we hear the movie reviews, you know, and I've had them online <laughs> over the weekend. And I just put them on at right after my shows run on the weekend. Uh, and that's where you could find them. On his website. Or you could go to Roku and find them there. Go to his website. Well, sir. today I decided that I would now post them. Uh -oh. So if you go over to gabnet.net and the on-demand page at the very top, at least for the next two days, three days, will be Michael Snyder and his uh, Culture Blast movie <laughs> reviews. He's now, the one in, in the beret and uh, black leather yeah, jacket. Yeah, I, I have a disclaimer to put out, though, first. If, <laughs> if you go to see any of the movies he recommends and they suck, don't blame me. Right. Okay? Uh, but the, the mo I decided to make them available where most people could get them because we've just so hidden them over the last <laughs> two years. So I figured, that's ah, no more trouble for me to make one more posting than all I've got to do in order to put them up in the first place, so... Okay. Nestor, it's yeah. It's ten twenty-eight, Alex. Yeah, you have it's ten twenty-eight. No, no, no. At two minutes, do not even start moving over here yet. Do not move into my frame. Go, go away. Go away. Don't move into my frame. It's ten twenty-nine. I'm gonna have to keep you there. <laughs> uh. So anyway, what else? Any other little things I want people to know that they. That's about it. Uh, now, we, I don't think we're going to get any callers tonight. If we don't get any calls tonight, I'm going to close it out early. Okay, well, you I'm, know, I'm uh, not going to wait around because, for the callers. Because we don't have Phil calling, and uh, I think Patrick is not going to be able to make it tonight. Well, come on, everybody else. Uh, and Patrick next week is going in for some uh, gall, gall bladder stones. Uh, no, what is it, bladder stones or kidney, kidney stones? stones? Kidney stones. Yeah, but to be removed, you know. He has continual, phys you know, I will, yeah. I don't know why I complain about my health. Well, I'm healthier than most of non my audience. Stop. Non stop. Hmm? I've gotten to the point where I just don't listen anymore. I mean, it kind of goes through me, and I nod my head every once in a while. Well, I suddenly get cramps and stuff. Here we go. Yeah. My Here fingers, go. today I couldn't move this Help. finger. This finger was like Help. all askew, you know, kind of gets like. 1029. What? What? Oh, uh, now you're coming. Oh. Who said you could come over I here? I made the decision. <laughs> Get back where you were. Now. Oh, dear. Okay, come on over. Come on over. Roll over. Roll, roll over. over okay, roll now let me, let me, roll roll I got to do something here. There we go. Got to do, wait a minute. Okay, now wait a minute. 
I'm just do, putting do, it in the middle. Wait, do you mind if I turn on the, the Skype line? The Skype lines are on, folks. If you don't know how to call us, all you oh. need to do, my friends, is call. It, no, is go over to uh, gabnet.net. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't worry, you'll keep seeing the show, okay? Because <laughs> uh, there's the videos on over there as well. And um, uh, on the right hand side of the page, it tells you how to call us and how to, you know, get on and, and do the whole thing. And uh, Ray, Jeff Stein. No, that, no, those that's that's well, just uh, that, that, calling. No, those aren't those aren't names of people who are calling. No, like, I'm saying that. Like there's somebody who's always been on here. Uh, it says Skype contacts, and I don't. Byron S. Paskin is listed twice, and I don't even know who the fuck he is. Isn't Brian the no, Brian? No, no, he's listed now, three Jeff times. Jeff Stein is listed one, two, two three. Three times. Who's Alex you? Bennett is listed. Oh, Dan Wait a minute, Dan Z. Z. Wait a minute, now who is Dan Z? I bet he's somebody we already know. Are you, uh, Dan, are you there? Dan, are I'm you there? Th you're here? Do you, Do you have, have a, a camera? Do you have a camera? I, I thought so. Oh, well, turn, turn, it turn it on. There it goes. Okay. Uh, and, uh, hey. oh, there is, there is Dan Z. And there, that, and that, I guess that's your wife sitting next to you, right, Dan? It is. And how do I see my own picture? Huh? Well, Hi. Oh, there we are. Okay. Hi, Audrey. Marjorie. 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 <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Jeff, I got to, I, 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 I don't know how yeah. I got to put you on. Just Let me just do something. Button. Hold on a second. I'll be with you in a second. If he loses, you Let me call hang back. up on Jeff and then let me call Jeff. He's still testing this let out. Let me call Jeff. Five years later. Back. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I know what to do. I know what to do. Wait a minute. I can't. Hold on a second. I, I oh, see what happened, Dan. Uh, you asked to be, uh, did you ask to be accepted? You have to be accepted. Oh, I didn't ask anything. Oh, I see. Them. Okay. Oh. Here's, here's what you do. I'm going to hang up on you and just, call uh, uh, I'll call you back. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Now let me first get Tom, Tom Yamaguchi here. All right. There's Tom. Hey, Tom. Okay, Tom. Hey. And here comes oh here comes Mark Thorner. Okay. Now both of you stay right where stay you are because I'm gonna try and call Dan Z. Z. So, oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Wait a minute, hold so on. Everybody a hand, oh there's Mr. Hansen. Okay, here here comes uh, <laughs> Hi, Jeff Stein. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Call Dan Z. Uh, add, 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 to uh, add to contacts, but I'm gonna try and call him too. Uh, let me see here. Can I call him? And uh, oh, add to group. Add, add to, to group. group. There we go. Now should he call back? Huh? No, no. He has a camera. Dan Z. We're ringing Dan Z. Let's see if Dan Z picks up. Hey, I don't know if he will. Come Dan, on, Dan. Call us. How no, no, no. Know? He's. I, see, it's ringing him. See where that little head yeah, is? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's ringing him. Here Kevin. comes Kevin. Boy, everybody. Boy, let in. Phil not call, and everybody calls <laughs> like crazy. God. <laughs> They love their fill free nights. They love it. Uh, if you're listening, uh, Dan. Dan, I have I have made you a. Um, so can he just call now that you accepted huh? him? Can he call he, Phil? He, he could. Yeah, he could. Can. Oh, there we go. Are, are you there? are you there, Dan? I'm here. Turn your okay, camera Okay, turn on. your camera on. Here we go again. Okay, yeah. here we go again, and what? just turn the camera on. The right, see where the camera is. Turn it on. Well, let's see, first time for for Dan. Okay. Okay, but we try to be nice for newbies. There they are. Let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dan, where are you calling from? Annapolis, Maryland. Oh, Annapolis, great place. Maryland. And uh, who is the lovely woman sitting next to you? Louise. 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 Lovely Louise. She comments on your thing, and we comment back and forth. I oh, love your oh, photography. Yes, Oh, do you really? She's, yeah, we come in. And I love your photography. You're really gifted. Really? Yeah, her stuff is great. As gifted as Phil? <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, no, she's really good. <laughs> she's the real deal. Well, all you have to do when you want to join in on the conversation, just raise your hand and uh, I will immediately recognize you. And, um, uh, Louise, I'm so you, you know, you're like there. right now, like Tom Yamaguchi has raised his hand. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. What do you got to uh, say? I want to wish both of you a happy Friday the 13th. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Kevin, is your hats, does that say hot tuna? Yes, it does. Oh, 
Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time, but I used to know Will Scarlett of uh, oh. Hot Buddha. Yeah. Oh, great. Long time Berkeley musician. Yeah. Turn your mic up a yeah. little bit, Kevin. Turn They're your coming mic. around in uh, September over here. Yeah. Oh, good. Turn your mic up a little bit, Kevin. Uh, no, I just got to open my mouth. Oh, there you go. You got to open oh, your mouth. he's got that nice. Hey, and look, Mark Thorner's called us tonight. Hey, Hello, Mark. Marcus. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. How's everything in Naples? Uh, I think there. You had hotter temperatures up in New York today than we did. Finally, we've Finally. had. It's been so <laughs> fucking cold here. It's it just 81 been degrees today. And tomorrow it's going to be warmer. Well, well either that it'll be freezing again. But <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah, it's but you know, you know what I noticed though weather. is this time of the year trees would be blooming. They're blooming. Yeah. They're not. Yes, not, they're budding. Not they're, the street I yes, went down. Yes, they're budding all over. The street the place. I went down, they were. They look like just divining rocks. Well, because rods. you don't look up, you walk down and you. Look. Oh, you just shut up <laughs> about that. <laughs> but it's true. God, there used to be a show on radio years ago with Donna Michi and I think Francis Langford, and it was called <laughs> The Bickersons. Right. And all they would do for a half hour is argue, and I think that's we got a f good format going for us here. <laughs> By the way, here comes here the comes. voice of Gabnet, Rob Alfano. There he is. The, 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 Hi, <laughs> with that fancy microphone, which I like. Yeah, you can get me one of those for my birthday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi, hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. How's, huh? How's it going tonight? It's going fine. Meet Louise and uh, Dan Z. Is that I right? Know. You. Yeah, they're they they are, uh, we we have a uh, we have newbies. Zeitlin. We have newbies. Oh oh, you're you're Louise Zeitlin. Yes, I told you. Oh, I get we get the things all the time from you and notes. And her and, photography is great. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, yes, Louise, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, we've been writing back and forth on comments. Yes, we have. Yeah. Yeah. No, she write. In fact, you also write on the. Um, uh, on the chat, don't you? Yes, I write a lot. She's good. Yeah, yeah. The fact, right here, it says uh, she's in a really good mood. Or you said to her, uh. and I think uh, <laughs> were you the one that said she looked beautiful? Was that you? Might have been. You know. So, yeah. So. And you were worried nobody was going to call noise. tonight. Yeah. I was worried nobody was going to call right. tonight. Right. What's that Wait, noise? what is that noise? I think it's coming from uh, from. No, it's not coming from you. No, I can't blame it on Jeff. Okay, Jeff, I won't blame it on you then. So what what's happening down in uh, down in uh, uh, Florida? Uh, uh, you know, you have a new resident down there, our good friend Ro uh, uh, Albert, Albert Reynoso, who called us the other night. Is uh, Al's down here? Yeah. Yes, he's living down on there. on the on the other coast, the East Coast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. But, but our friends Adrian and Charlie live in Naples. Yeah. In fact, they keep invite us to keep inviting us to come down to Naples. So if we ever come down to Naples, uh, we'll... yeah, you better let me know. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will let you know, right? Yeah. And and again, um, uh, Louise and 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 uh, Dan is it Dan? Yeah, Dan. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where do you live again? I Annapolis. Just, Na in Annapolis. Mm -hmm. That's Maryland. Wow, yeah. we have a nice uh, representation tonight of of people. Um. Anybody uh, see what Comey had to say today? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every do you notice this, Rob? Every news person in the business, when they get a chance to use a word they can't normally use on TV, use it they to use death it all the time. And they That's love right. saying P today. Yeah, that was their big word. And Comey in the interview said it three times. Yeah. I don't know if the girls are peeing on him. <laughs> no, but what he said is, I, I hate to say this, but, you know, I had to tell him they have in the dossier and on tape, you with hookers peeing. <laughs> and uh, uh, every, uh, when I heard that, it was the first thing I heard when I woke up this morning and I said, it's Everyone. Friday and I've been given a gift, <laughs> you know. Everyone's going to use it. Now, my question is, does anybody here mind if our president gets peed on? I, I wouldn't mind pissing on him. <laughs> I, I'd even do the peeing. What? I would even, I'd volunteer to do the peeing. Yeah. I'll, I'll volunteer with you. Uh, you know. And they got paid. <laughs> <laughs> In right. fact, we can all go pee on him, and I'll pass out the water. 
okay? So you can just get good and, you know, we can get them good and drenched. No, I mean, I don't know if that bothers us necessarily, you know? Well, just the thought of him But naked. the fact that somebody, you know, all those good Christians who, who yeah. love this guy. They're doing a pass on him because he's putting lawyers, uh, judges in. Yeah. That's so, the so, only reason. Yeah. So I want to know what their excuse is now. Well, they're saying this was in the past. When yeah. he became president, changed. everything got cleansed. What are, you, what are you saying, Rob? He's a changed man. He's a changed <laughs> yeah. man. Oh, yeah, sure he has. Well, I mean, it's not as easy for him to get laid now that he's president. You know. <laughs> oh, and uh, uh, Joe Wilson was being interviewed by Katie Turn, and he said fucking on MSNBC today, too. Really? Did they bleep yeah. it out? Yeah, it, during an interview, I got I recorded it. But they didn't bleep it out. They didn't out. bleep it out. No, they didn't bleep it out. Wow. Well, you got to realize that's that's just that's basic cable. You can fudge on that. If this were on like network oh, television, it was clean. Yeah, it was live. If this yeah. if this were net if that were network television, uh, they'd be in trouble. All of a sudden, every station that carried that word <laughs> would get fined. You know. I got it right here if you want to see it. But I don't know <laughs> if that's legal or not. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I've heard the word before. Yeah, I know. It was just funny because she, Katie Turn just kind of went, uh, 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 okay, thank you. Well, well we, we, yeah. I like her. It, 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 yes, uh, pa, uh, Tom. I was just thinking uh, a couple of days ago, or I, maybe it was yesterday, um, when the word came out that, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Trump possibly docked up a maid, um, someone noticed that, uh, that, uh, a similar situation with Schwarzenegger, and he says, "Well, he can't be, um, he can't be, if he can't be president, maybe he could be governor of California, <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or, or be, or, or be the star of The Apprentice." Or, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was thinking, with, re, thinking about that now when you're talking about the um, about uh, the P, because some, <laughs> there's rumors going around that Arnold and Maria, that's what they enjoyed. Doing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard those rumors, but well, I mean, with each other. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but that's within the family. This is like some oh, hooker in yeah. Russia, you know. <laughs> this is a hooker in Russia. You just, it's not this. It's not the same thing. Uh, <laughs> but um, I just, you know, when I heard this today, I went, "Oh God!" You know, all we're going to hear now today are all the news people saying, uh, uh, "P P." PPP. Right. PPP. 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 A lot of PPP. Yes, yes, uh, J uh, Jeff. Jeff. This has been a terrible day for me because, you know, I, I take Lasix, which is a, a, a drug that makes you go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. And, of course, I turn on the TV, and then I got to go back again. <laughs> <laughs> the combination the drugs, Trump, and the TV. It's been a tough day. Well, you know, there, people have sexual predilections, and I have nothing against that. And if somebody told me, hey, I like to get peed on, I wouldn't think any less of the person, you know. But uh, this is Trump that this is being said about. And this is the president of the United States. And somebody felt compelled to warn him about it because he knew that there was a dossier out there and that uh, they had maybe had videotapes because the Russians videotape everybody. Everything. Because they want to be able to get stuff on them. So if you book into a hotel room and you're a famous person, they've got cameras rolling in that room. Yeah. And uh, huh? Let's see. The, really? Oh, in yeah. Russia. Oh, yeah. In Russia. Yeah. In Russia. Uh, you know, here it's only at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, hookers show up. So what he warned him about was that at least his intelligence told him that they had videotapes, and he wanted him to know that. And he said, well, please don't tell anybody, blah, 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 because Melania will get really mad at me, you know. <laughs> um, and, and he says, it's only a rumor. It's not true, but don't spread the rumor. <laughs> you know, I mean, don't tell you anybody. Feel stupid, stupid? <laughs> now, what came out today was this, what, this maid, was she? And they paid she, her a million and a half dollars. And she had an abortion or did she had the child? She, no, she had an abortion. I think she had an abortion. Uh, yes, oh, Tom. Well, that's something else entirely. That's a playmate. A playmate. Maid You're right. Was, You're right. The maid was the doorman story. Oh, okay. What was that The doorman 
uh, was paid off by the National Enquirer in the same way that the other other play made. Right, and he he, uh, he got thirty he got thirty thousand, I think. The yeah. doorman. So, so basically, they spiked his story, and now he's saying that you know, yes, this is what happened okay. to me. So. Um, so the playmate now was this another playmate or was this, this Kristen? This what's her name? Huh? This is a new playmate. This is a new playmate. The new playmate who got man quality impregnated. Guy. Let's say impregnated. Yeah. Uh, by a major donor, I forgot his. I don't have his name, but he was he he quickly resigned. Oh, from from, from the, the RNC. Yeah. RNC. The yeah. RNC. He was a major donor. You know, major. So he was the father of the child, no, not Trump. No. He was the father, father. And, he's, and he's the one who arranged for Trump's lawyer to pay her. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on a second. I thought, I, thought that, I thought this woman who was pregnant got pregnant by Trump. That's what That's I thought. That's what I thought. No, 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 no. It was the donor. It was the but donor. Trump's lawyer <laughs> paid her the money. Money or the- sperm or both? <laughs> An abortion. Got an abortion. Didn't he pay her a million and a half dollars or something to shut up? Yeah. Wow. That was a very expensive abortion. (laughs) Very expensive abortion. He's going to start his own whole magazine for all these women. Yeah, you could you could buy Planned Parenthood for that. (laughs) And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bed. Going to bed. Oh, good night, Marjorie. Good night. Good night. I've been up since four. Hi. I'm yeah. tired. Good to see you, Louise. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm glad to see you, Louise and, and Dan as well because yeah. they they she's written me constantly about everything. Too. You know. <laughs> no, I I pre I appreciate it. Many times I answer Sorry. them, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there there she goes. How many, now, how many of you believe that the president is not above using this strike on Syria to change the the dialogue in the news? <laughs> not above, absolutely. Well, he, he attacked once before, you know. Uh, yes, uh, Dan. It's deep right now. Huh? You got to remember my name. Deep. He yeah. needs a diversion. He needs, you know, and, and it doesn't, he, he could care less about this country and about our our, our institutions, all he cares about is self-preservation. And himself is right. Top. So yeah. I don't put it past him that all of a sudden this is going on. Dan had his hand up. Yes, Dan. Yeah, you know, one of the things that, that bothers me about this talk of sexual misconduct and other Mar-a-Lago, it's the deflections from the circus of what he's doing. And yeah. people tend to write off. Move a little closer to your move a little closer to your microphone, Dan, because you you yeah. need to cut out. Yeah. Well, I, I should probably get a real microphone. Yeah, that's okay. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I said the thing that bothers me about all this talk about sexual misconduct and, and the deflections from a lot and all that is that it's the deflection that are really serious, and that his supporters find it easy. To write off all the sexual stuff by saying, "Oh, you know, Bill Clinton did this, somebody else did that," and and the, and the ways he's destroying the country and this war he's just decided to start um, are far more serious. But they're, you know, for the average guy in the street, that's not dialogue. It's it's movie star celebrity kind of nonsense about who he's screwing and who got peed on and all that. Yes, yeah. yeah. deflection from what's really serious. Yeah, there, there's a thing they uh, that uh, Bill Maher. Uh, referred to as whataboutism, that the, these people always go, well, what about Clinton? Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what yes. about Clinton. He's not president now, has nothing to do with it. We're saying, what about Trump? You know, I mean, and to suddenly get this this idea that, that because somebody else did something just as bad, that this isn't just as bad is is ridiculous. You You have to deal with the situation. I don't care that he gets peed on by Russian hookers, but I think that that Baptist minister in Texas would care. But he doesn't say anything about it because Trump's his guy. You know? Hypocrite. Yeah. Tom? And it, once again, the Supreme Court and all the federal courts, as long as he's delivering uh, on what they want in the courts, 
they'll look, turn away, look the other way, and they'll even just and, and defend him and even justify and rationalize everything about him. That's right. Yep. So, I mean, you know, this is a... But, you know, I go back to the old question about, okay, so we get rid of Trump. Let's say we catch him really with the goods, all right? And he's got to resign, okay? We get, the hardest. We, we get Pence, yeah. you know? What? You know, I'm, what, what, now the question is, who would you rather have as president? Trump, who at least gives us a good laugh every other day? Or, <laughs> or, or Pence, who's going to make our life a living hell? Yes, uh, uh, Mark. First Mark. My uh, late friend, I'm going to say something very rude. When you get into a situation, he likes to think of it as, you want that kick in the ass? Fine. Have him have a mouse trap on the privates first. Oh, but I want that kick in the ass. Well, you have to have that fly trap first. So this is the same situation here. Yeah, yeah. I have one to the other. And uh, it's like, Thing one, thing two, you know, I. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think uh, greater than the, the Secret Service protecting Trump, the biggest protection he has against assassination is the fact that Pence exists. Well, you know? I, remember, I remember months ago, we were not so much joking about that was the reason that was like his insurance that nothing would happen to him. Yeah. You get someone who would be even worse than him. I don't you know? think Pence has the. Uh... I don't think Pence is as reprehensible. I don't agree with his politics, but I don't get as he, like, I don't believe that it's, I believe he cares about the country, and I believe that he's not, uh, like, a misogynist and a, well, and, I, a, and a guy who, 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 him above everything, country, everything. I don't think Pence is that way. I would think he would have, certainly have far more respect for the presidency. That's for damn sure. Yes, Dan. And, it's in the, well, I think, and that's in that same Along that same line, I think it scares me about Pence. I don't know the politics either. I'll tell you. But you no, hear you. Uh, political. Yeah. Out, he knows how to choose. Dan, we're having a little trouble understanding you, and I think part of the reason is: Do you have your you you have Skype on, right? I do. What yeah. are you using? A PC or a Mac? PC. PC. Uh, go up to where it says. You see where it says Tools at the very top? Does it say oh. Tools? Huh? No, but I'm sure I can find them if I need to. If you can what? find tools and you can find microphone, turn off the automatic volume control because I think that's oh, what the PC. Yeah. Uh, it may, it's depends on the version that of Skype you have because my Windows version does okay. not have a menu on the top. Okay, where would you find it then? Where would you? <clears throat> that's a good question. I'm trying to find it. There's got to there's got to be one place where you can take it off automatic uh, audio. I don't know that you can do it when you're logged in anymore, when you're on a Skype call, because it, there's not a lot here. Yeah. They've simplified it. Yeah. Open conversation. No preferences? No, no menu. The top bar, there's, there's, no, there's menu. no menu. I think they all, I, see, I see the little symbols, but I don't see an actual menu. What anything. symbol do you have? There's some... Well, you know, the microphone symbol. Oh, yeah, the, the microphone symbol. Oh, oh, you mean, but that would turn it on and off. That wouldn't. That's all I get. Yeah. yeah, you can't do it while you're in a call. No, yeah. no, well, that's okay. Just uh, <laughs> we'll 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 live with it. But if you, if you can, when you're before you call the next time, we hope you absolutely will uh, uh, check and see if you can if you can turn off automatic. Uh, I'll probably use a real microphone the next time. Well, uh, you still would have to turn that off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, if you can hear me, what I oh, was you're to say, you're fine uh, now for some reason. What, I was, what yeah. I was trying to say about Pence was that the the thing that scares me about him, and I don't agree with any of his politics, is that he knows how the political process works. He knows how to get things through Congress. He knows how to get deal with the Senate, uh, which is something Trump hasn't a clue about. Yeah. So Pence can be more effective pushing the things that we all find onerous uh, yeah. than. Than Trump can in the way that he operates. We just have to hope for those midterm elections. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, yes, Tom. Yeah, I would say, yeah, Pence is a slightly more competent, but not much. I mean, he was. Well, I think he has he, more respect for the presidency. He has more respect, uh, and and also he's he's he'd be very easy to defeat as well. I mean, he was 
he was, you know, he, he was he was losing in in Indiana. That's why he didn't run again. So, and basically, the reason he was on, ended up on the ticket in the first place is nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted to run with with Trump. <laughs> it's the only one that really accepted. So I think I think uh, I, I'm willing really to take my chances to dealing with Pence because we just got got to get rid of this. I, I think a guy who I refer to as Fat Fuck over in New Jersey, yeah. um, <laughs> Fat Fuck in New Jersey. Fat fuck. Uh, uh, what's his name? Huh? Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Chris Chris uh, Chris Crisco. Uh, uh, he. Um, uh, uh, I think would have taken it in a second. Giuliani would have taken it in a second. Giuliani oh, would, no. you know, if if Trump said, you want to be vice president, and he said, yeah, I yes. do, and he'd go, well, blow me first, he would blow him. You know, I mean, that's that's Giuliani. It would be more of a, a request for him to pee on him, I think. Uh, yeah, it could be, could be. <laughs> How long but, would it be until he got fired? But, and it'd be pretty easy for... Uh, uh, I think it's easier now for Giuliani because he had his prostate work done. So, <laughs> you know, his flow is much better now. Yes, Dan. What was your face? Huh? I'm able to cover her face too. That's okay. I found that study. I just want to send it. Where? Uh, there's a little plus sign that goes after all the icons, and if you click on that, audio settings. Oh, uh, look at that! I never even thought to try the plus because. I figured it okay, was... Okay, so now, does, now with audio settings, does it have something there for turning the... Uh, it the, does, and I turned it off. Okay, you turned it off? I did. Okay, I think uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit better. It was on, right? It was on. Okay, good. Now it's, it did sound much better. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, there the for the, uh, <laughs> it's also there for the Mac version, too. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, I, I haven't looked. Is Mac, do they have a new version for Mac? See, I use the old version of... Uh, no, it's on the new version of Mac, too. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Oh, because I use the old version of... Uh, uh, I They have a, a what you can go and get online, and they put it back up again, is what they call Skype Classic. And that's what I use because I like the way the picture looks on the show. It would look different if I went to the new Skype. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm very happy with it uh, the way Does it, it is. Does it make you look better? Huh? Does it make you look better? No, no. Uh, ugly stays <laughs> ugly. I got to tell you. Uh, you know that's I'm a great thing. Ridiculous. That's a great thing about not being really good looking. You know, <laughs> is that uh, if if you're handsome when you're young, you could turn out. You see what guys turn into like you know, big fat ugly guys, right? When they get older. But uh, if you're ugly to begin with. Uh, you don't get any uglier. In fact, you probably look better than the guys who look good when they were younger. Am I right? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So uh, uh, you don't want you know you, you don't want to be too good looking when you're young because uh, how many you know I saw this actress Kristen uh, Thomas maybe is that was that her name she was on uh, uh, third Pla uh, third planet from the sun or whatever that show was. Uh, do you remember her? You remember her, Kristen? What was her oh. name? Well, she was on Mom last night, playing a prison inmate, and this woman has gained like five hundred pounds. I swear, <laughs> she looked like somebody took an air hose and shoved it in her mouth and just blew her up. Uh, and she used to be kind of hot, you know. <laughs> and well, always, she was always big. She was always big. Yes, you know who I'm talking about, Kristen. Yeah, I, I can't yeah. remember the last name. Uh, Wayne Knight's character had a thing for her, right? What? On Third Rock, Wayne Knight was also yeah. He, yes, he played the security guard. He had a thing for her. Yeah, right. I know who you're talking. About. And and she was in uh, one of the uh, uh, Ivana Humpalot. Yes, I know. Ivana Humpalot. Yeah, in in uh, in those movies. Oh, God, I can't remember things anymore. Austin Powers. Austin Powers. But anyway, I saw her last night, and I went, "What the fuck happened to her?" You know. At what point do you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I think I still look good? You know, I mean, uh, uh, you, you, especially if you're an actress, I would think you would work on keeping the weight off, you know. Uh, okay. But uh, I was on radio. Guys on radio usually, when they get older, are fat because they don't have to look good, right? Am I right, Rob? <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I, I used to watch my weight all the time. What, the cat came in? 
My wife came in. Oh, your wife me. came in. Okay. And with the door open mysteriously, and I figured that was maybe the cat. And now the cat just came in. Now the cat just came in. All right. Um, no, I, uh, uh, working radio, the only reason why I ever kept my weight off and I kept myself looking as good as I could was because I also was doing TV as well. Uh, but then when I just wound up on nothing but radio, I blew up, you know, so. Uh, and now that I'm on TV again, I had to lose all that weight, as you know. Well, isn't the phrase, uh, he has the looks for a radio? That's right. That's right. <laughs> By the way, your sound is fine. Your sound is fine now. Of course, you'd be better with a great microphone like you know, like he's got. But uh, uh, you, you sound good. You sound great, Dan. So you know, um, uh, Louise, uh, you haven't said much about anything. What do you think about our dear if president? This works, by the way, to keep her from saying a lot of things. This is a great mechanism. I like. It. You like that? Yeah. Uh, no. What? I couldn't hear you. What? What? Did somebody mute your microphone? Looks like a cat to me. Your microphone looks like a cat. Oh, his! Oh, his microphone looks like a cat. No, that is a cat. <laughs> that is a cat. We got. Is the that baby in the room here? And the big one, the older one, wants to come in, and he won't let her. Oh, um, really? Uh, yeah. Now, is he growling? She growls at him. Oh, really? Her and she growls at him. Uh, yes, Louise. I know that Tony likes to talk about his dogs. Yeah. So I have a dog I want to put in front of the camera. Is that okay? Go right ahead. Okay. You know, if anybody else has a pet they want to put on the, on the show tonight, uh, have with it, you know. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. What it, oh. This is Lucy. Lucy? Oh. And how long have you owned Lucy? About four years. She's almost about four years. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, there, uh, well here, here's, here's the cat. Wait a minute. He, uh, he's trying to get the cat to come on camera. Where well, the cat keeps cat moving. Oh, there. Uh, 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 did the other one just come in, Rob? The older one just came in because the younger one went out. Oh, they mm -hmm. won't occupy the same space at the same time? Um, well, well, she avoids him. Yeah. She avoids him. Yeah. yeah. It's so amazing that I can have, uh, Louise and, and Dan in, uh, in, uh, uh, Annapolis and, uh, I can have you, uh, I always keep forgetting which, <laughs> uh, in Virginia, right? Yeah. Northern yeah. Virginia. Northern Virginia. Uh, and and you can have the cat on. He, they can have the dog on, and either the cat or the dog seem to be bothered by each other. <laughs> yes, Louise. I wanted to ask Rob how big his cat is. It looks very big. Uh, he's um, about fifteen and a half pounds. Oh, okay, wow. that's more than our dog. The other one's about this nine is, pounds. This is so anyway, you know you know what's happened here. Uh, I bought a uh, I bought a mini Mac uh, from from Phil uh, because he he got a new computer and he didn't need his mini Mac anymore. And he had like his thirteen hundred dollar mini Mac. He had it loaded with like sixteen gigabytes of RAM and it was you know one terabyte uh, fusion drive and it, it really fast three point oh. So I went. Uh, I got it. I'll, I'll buy that off of you. So I bought it off of him, and I set it up in the other room, and it is so good. I now have another studio, complete studio, in another room. Oh, well, you could do a remote. So I'm thinking of calling it the <laughs> Phil Meyer Studio. <laughs> is that like the Bob Barker Studio? Yes, I, yeah, the Phil 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 Meyer Studio, right? <clears throat> And if he could, and he get you know, he can lay his hands on his prostate they removed. If he can put it in a jar and send it to me, I will put it you know in a place of prominence in the <laughs> Phil Meyer studio. So. You can put it a light in it, and then when the when the mic goes on, you can light up his prostate. Yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> very good. Uh, but anyway, so I have to you know, but it's still uh, I, I I could actually do a show out of there. I don't know if I could do this. I haven't figured that out yet, but you know. You know, ever notice when you when you get a new computer and you set it up, you forgot how to set up a computer because oh, yeah. it's been so long since you did it. Uh, right. it it's just maddening. 
just absolutely maddening. I'm not so good with the Mac as I am with the PC because I worked on PCs for so many years. Yeah. When I do something on the Mac, I, I have to Google it. Yeah, well, to set up this Mac, it's been so long since I've set up a Mac. I forgot where all the little switches are to turn things on and off and so on, yep. you know. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. I don't know for a shirt or something. You know, I got about I got about I got about four weeks left before my brain goes completely. <laughs> yes, Jeff. I'm just right behind you. Don't yes, worry. Jeff. <clears throat> I solve all of my computers with a thirteen year old. Oh really? My granddaughters. Yeah. They're geniuses. Well they can they can fix anything. I have always been really good with computers, you know. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Look at that kitty. Yeah, look at the kitty. Is that the young That's, one? This is the old one. The old one. She's the smaller cat. She's only about nine pounds. She's 13. Yeah. And they call ra rag dolls, right? Yeah, she's a rag doll. Yes, uh, Louise. I wanted to ask Rob what kind of cat that is. Yeah. It's a rag doll. Rag doll. They're both rag dolls. Rag dolls. Yeah. Is that the, the cat? Rag doll? No, that's the type of cat. You know, yeah, what kind of cat is that? Fluffy. <laughs> really, really fluffy. Um, I don't have a cat. I don't have a dog. I don't have a dog because I don't want to take him out and have to pick up poop. You know, I really, I just, I find that, you know, if there were people coming from outer space and they landed here and they had to report on this uh, planet, they say, well, the dominant species is this thing called a dog. Well, how do you know it's dominant? Well, because these other creatures go around picking up their shit, you know. And you would assume that the dog was dominant over the over the human. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen to me. Uh, so, I a girlfriend said, "Let's get a dog." I said, "You want to walk it? You want to get the poop and do all that? G great, you know." Oh, I want to get a big dog. Well, I said, well, I guess we could have a big dog in this apartment. But, you know, if we ever have to move to a small apartment, I don't want a Great Dane living there. All right. But I have always wanted a cat, but we can't get a cat because every time this cat comes to stay with us, I have to put the screens in the window so it doesn't commit suicide from the eighth floor of this building, you know. Um, so it's, it's, not, uh, it's, not, it's not easy. So I, I can't have a cat, and I love cats. I just think they're the best. You know, uh, you I like do love dogs. I grew up with dogs until I got to a point in life where it, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to be tied down. You know, the dog with the cat. I both cats last weekend for Easter. We were in New York. The cats are fine. They have the robotic, you know, litter thing. They got their food. Yeah, we don't. And they, and they got each other for company. Yeah, you well, know. Yeah. They really don't, get, and you you come back home, and it's not like they're waiting at the door. Why? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? You know, they go, hey, f hey, fuck you. We were having a good time. We, exactly. You know, thank God you came before the food ran out. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, no, but I, I like cats because they, they you could leave them in an apartment, you know, for a couple of days without you being there. And if there's another cat with them, they they do just fine. But dogs, man, they they got to go out when they got to go out. Mm -hmm. So you got to then find somebody who's going to go walk the dog and do all that crap. And uh, they're just too high. dogs are too high maintenance, mm -hmm. and the two they're too they're too friendly. You know, I mean, I like cats because they go, I love you, I'm hungry, feed me, I love you, I love you. So you feed them and they go, fuck you. <laughs> and I like that about a cat. You know, I like that independence. Yes, Dan? Well, you you know, we, the last dog we had, uh, Lucy is, is very much of a lap dog and wants your affection the whole time. Yeah, you're home, you're home, I'm really glad. But we had one that she had a very aloof attitude, much like a cat. Mm -hmm. I mean, she'd look at you and like, is there something I can do for you? And then she'd walk away. She'd never sit in your lap. She'd sit in front of you and she'd bare her teeth if anybody came close. But she pretty much had a feed me, leave me alone attitude. Very, yeah. Very, very cat like. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I always liked having Siamese cats because I found they were a lot like dogs in that there was a certain loyalty there you you seem to agree with that uh, 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 uh 
boy, my mind is just Mark. Uh, oh, sorry. Were you speaking to me? <laughs> you, you seem yes, to agree with. That. You seem to agree. Um, uh, forget me with names tonight. You know, uh, what's her name? Just left the room, and you know, whatever. Anyway, Mark, uh, you seem to agree with that about Siamese cats. And, and the similar breeds uh, are amazing. They are very dog-like in personality. And their loyalty. And, their loyalty is amazing. Yeah, I've had both cats and dogs, and uh, right now I have none. You know, yeah. But, uh, yeah, advantages, disadvantages. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I did. We do. We ha do like sitting for this cat because this cat is like really cool. You know, uh, <laughs> Natalia said to us, "We sent you our cat, and she came back a diva." Uh, because we just spoiled this cat. Plus, we sh they have a they have a fairly they have a decent sized apartment, but it's not huge. Not like this one. This cat was it was like going to camp for the cat. She would start at one end of the of the of the apartment and just run head top speed from one end to the other and turn around and run the other way. And uh, so, uh, and sleeping on your wood floors, huh? Slipping and sliding on your oh yeah floor. absolutely That's well we we have rugs so she would like but it was like blah, 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 blah. while I'm trying to sleep by the way you know <laughs> yes Dan yeah I re I recall since we're talking about cats when I was uh, a teenager I had a friend that lived in a neighboring town I lived in White Plains he was in Scarsdale and he had a cat that was the epitome of independence the cat would disappear for three weeks at a time mm -hmm. he'd come back he'd eat and drink copious amounts and then he'd go up in the rafters and he'd sleep for a week then he'd be gone for another two weeks then he'd come back and he'd eat and sleep and he'd be gone again for another two weeks. i had an uncle like that <laughs> i uh i uh, i've heard about cats i can't remember who the cat was it wasn't one of ours i don't believe who literally some cats, especially if you're like living and eh, somewhat in the semi in the country. I lived in Marin County, and we had a cat, and there were woods in back of us and stuff, and a lot of houses around us. That the cats would go and find another house, and they would eat there, and then they come back to your house and eat there, and you would never know that they had this other place that they actually went to and hung out. Cat, well, I cat, said I had an uncle like that. huh? What? I have an uncle like that. You had a what like that? An uncle like that. An uncle like that. Somebody else's house, come back to Oh, yeah, okay, an uncle like that. <laughs> right. But I, I, you want me to tell you, the, I'll tell you the best dog story ever happened to us. I had a dog named Kipper. We named him after Yum Kipper because that's when we got him. And who names their dog after the highest of holy days in the Jewish religion? You know, that's like me naming, if I'm Islamic, naming my dog Ramadan. You know, and you just don't do it. But we named him Kipper, K-I-P-P-U-R. And uh, my parents one night decided they would walk down to the movie theater, which was about a mile away. We lived in Marin County. It was about a mile away. It was a nice night, and they figured we'll walk to the movie. They start walking the movie, and they look back, and here's Kipper following them. And my father yells at Kipper and says, Kipper, go home. And the dog kind of puts his tail between his legs and turns around and starts walking back up the hill. And they keep walking. All of a sudden, my father looks in back of him. And there's Kipper. He's about, about, you know, 20 paces behind. And he yells. He goes, Kipper, go home. And the dog, you know, tail between the legs, turns around, starts walking home. Finally, they're close to the movie theater. And they look back. And Kipper is still there. My father, Kipper, go home. And the dog, you know, turns around, pretends like he's walking home. They go into the movie theater. And in those days, there was a feature, a second feature, a cartoon, a newsreel, and a short subject. So you were, you weren't out of that theater in less than three hours, right? <clears throat> So they, uh, they, they, uh, they, when they went into the movie, they noticed that Kipper was there, and they just said, well, just let the dog sit out here and take care of himself till we're through with the movie. And they go in to watch the movie. Three hours later, they come out of the movie, and there's Kipper, still there. Oh, wow. And they go, well, at least he stayed there. That's terrific. That's wonderful. Okay, come on, Kipper, let's go home. And they start going home, and Kipper is just absolutely exhausted. 
he's like trailing behind them, kind of like just very lethargic. And they have no idea what's happened to this dog. And they they get home, and uh, Kipper goes into his area and goes to sleep, and they go to sleep. Next morning, my mother gets a call from somebody. And says, hey, uh, Ruth, uh, listen, uh, last night we were passing by the Tamil Pius Theater, and there was Kipper. So we had him get on the car, and we took him home. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother said, well, yeah, thank you very much. And she hung up. About an hour later, the phone rings. It's somebody else. Hi, Ruth. Listen, we were passing by the Tamil Pius Theater, and uh, we noticed a kipper was sitting in front of the theater. So we had him get in the car, and we took him home. She got a total of three calls. Apparently what happened that night, is everybody took this fucking dog home and he came back to the movie theater. You really wanted to see that movie. Huh? You really wanted to see that movie. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, that, it, it, my mother was amazed. It was like he had to make three trips back and forth, so that would have had to be, well, he would have had to have walked at least four, a total of four or five miles that night. Uh Kipper was, in many ways, the stupidest dog alive. So, you know, when we saw him once, it was so embarrassing. You know, he was a male dog. And so here's a tree. And there are all the dogs lined up next to the tree, right? And the first one goes up and lifts his leg, right? Takes a pee. Next dog goes over, lifts his leg, takes a pee. And then we watch Kipper. He walks up to the tree, squats, and takes a pee. It was embarrassing, you know, <laughs> just embarrassing. So anyway, uh, that was Kipper. We loved Kipper. He was he was the stupidest dog I ever owned. In fact, he was the only dog I ever owned. So yeah, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that the um, that dog I told you that was very cat-like. She left it her leg. Oh really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. That's kind of interesting. She was ahead of her time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 Tom. Oh. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I know your names. It's just I'm, you know, it's it, it it's getting that way now. You know. You, you can I'm, call me David Dennison too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say actually one of the dogs that uh, I help take care of is uh, a Chihuahua, a female Chihuahua, and when she pees, she lifts both of her legs off the back and tries to balance herself on her front legs. And uh, actually, I found out that that's actually not unusual, that a lot of really? small dogs actually do that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. That explain yeah. Trump's affinity for chihuahuas. <laughs> that's affinity for chihuahuas. Affinity for chihuahuas. Yeah, for chihuahuas. Let's talk for a second about, uh, let me just bring up Syria. How do you people feel about Syria? About what we should do in Syria? You know, uh, I know the reflex on the part of Trump is uh, we got to do something, and that's good. But what should that something be? I mean, last time we went in and we bombed an air base where we thought that the planes were flying to drop the chemical weapons. Uh, but the problem that we had that uh, was... Uh, inherent in all of that was we never actually did any real damage the next day planes were taking off from that air base and we really didn't hit anything we just set off a couple of uh, missiles and that's it um in this particular case what if we just wind up doing the same thing do we really is it worth going in there to do something that is not productive mm -hmm. sounds like we're downtown syria this time aren't we are we in downtown Syria? From what from what I've heard, they're going into the capital. Really? Yeah. Okay, so are we at war? I don't know. That's that's just what I've heard. They've got they had uh, <clears throat> reports that I saw, and there was only a few of them that there's bombs going off in the capital. Yeah, this just happened a few hours ago. A couple hours ago, yeah. Yeah. 
I got the uh, the headline That's on my watch. That's the first thing I thought of is, what are we going to do? Go bomb a couple of uh, abandoned, you know, abandoned air bases now or what? And then they started talking about well, the capital. Let's so. see here. It says, uh, oh, hold on a second. Um, I don't want to see about my goal today. My, uh, this one-time shot, the strikes targeted a research center, it says. Um a research center, a chemical weapons storage facility, and a command U.S. post, according to the defense sec- U.S. Defense Secretary. Doesn't say where, though. So you heard yeah, that Reuters, it was... Reuters, I think, was the one that was reporting it, so I don't what, know. That it was in Damascus? That we were... Yeah, that's what they're saying. Wow. Uh, yes, uh, Dan. Well, you know, when you bomb somebody, you're at war. You know, I don't care what you call it. You, you, that's an act of war. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have serious reservations about doing any bombing or to do any good. As you mentioned before, we've done it before with little results. I'm not sure I can remember a time except bombing the hell out of Gaddafi when it made any difference at all. Yeah. Civilians are bound to get killed, and we're not accepting any refugees, which is kind of nice. We bomb the hell out of them, but they can't come here. Uh, and if you've listened to any of the uh, traffic from neutral countries, uh, about what's going on uh, in terms of what the civilians think about it all. Well, very small percentage of them are in favor. Most of them say all it's going to do is hurt us. Go, go put political pressure on them. Do something else. The bombing is only going to be a the population. Yeah. We don't. We don't. I, I think I'm in that camp. Mm-hmm. Well, plus I the fact that he's, he's better to do a lot of black operations. <clears throat> plus yeah. the fact that he's, uh, he's threatening Trump Russia. Russia. He's threatening Russia at the same time. Who is? Oh, yeah. Trump? Trump, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is he threatening Russia, though? The The Russians don't want us there. No, they don't. But he's he's talking big to them right at the same time. Well. Well, he's talking about, he also mentioned Iran as well. He thinks Iran is also complicit in all of this. He's He's pissing everybody off. Yeah, he has to. He's going to change the narrative. Well, my question is, let's say you're Trump and your pal is Putin, okay? Now, what, like he talked to Putin just the other day, right? He wished him happy whatever, you know, happy winning of the election that yeah. he couldn't possibly lose. And um, I suppose they maybe talked to him about something else uh, a few days ago. Do you think in any of these conversations, hey, look, I'm going to have to, like, take sanctions against you, otherwise I'm going to look bad here, and and but, Putin goes, go right ahead because, you know, you're you're in my pocket anyway. Just do what you got to do in order to 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 keep the confidence of the American people. Does that make sense? I don't think they have any serious talks about it. Huh? I don't believe it. You don't think they've had any talks about it? I think they have talks, but I don't think Trump is adult enough to even say anything like that. I, I think it's I, I I can't imagine there's any useful dialogue between the two of them. Be, Trump, Trump, what he wants. Well, no. What what happens is Trump likes to think he's having useful useful dialogue but he's not getting it that putin's making him think he is you know and, and all you have to do in order to get trump on your side is to flatter him so yeah. you know if yeah. he flatters him he's going to love putin and he keeps saying well i want to get along with the russians because it's better if we get along with them than if we don't get along with them well then what's your excuse about the fact that you don't want to get along with the iranians Mm-hmm. You know, wouldn't the same philosophy be at work there that, you know, you want to be able to talk to everybody because when you can't talk to them, there's no way to find peaceful solutions? That would assume he has a philosophy yeah. that, is, that is consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, what do you think? You're sitting there kind of quiet. Yeah. Uh, just to, to, to uh, further what uh, Rob says, one of the, one of the problems with, with Trump is he has no... He has no process. I mean, it, it's irrelevant whether the decision is right or wrong. If 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 it, everything he does is impulsive, then there's no consistency there. You know, it's like one day's. Yeah, I mean, just remember, just a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about we're going to be out. It, it was just an aside at, at a campaign rally. Just oh, we're going to be out of Syria real soon. We're going to pull all our our troops out, and he didn't hadn't told anybody he had his own staff in the White House and the Defense Department, they were just like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> where'd this come from? 
you know, he he's he's just, he's just a total disaster. And, and once again, you know, he how can he claim moral authority mm. when when he basically is asking, why can't we just uh, in these drums, dr or, you know, drone strikes? Why can't we just kill the the, the the target's families too? And then he's talking about, oh, he's killing innocent children. Well, he doesn't have a problem with killing innocent children. He has virtually no moral authority to stand on. Well, I mean, the question is, does he have any politics to begin with? I don't think he's ever really had any real politics. I think mean, the politics he has is the politics of Trump. Yeah, Trump politics. Very completely. He does. The end result is to benefit him. So that's why it would seem, because it's not country first, it's not, it, 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 we're looking at pro policy country first. If you look at things maybe from Trump first, maybe some of the stuff would seem more consistent in what he does, because he's reacting to things that makes life easier or better for him and him winning and him looking good and him staying in office and him, 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 him. Okay, let's let's look at it this way. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Jeff, yes, you had your hand up. I'm not sure, but I, I, I thought, I'm pretty sure I understood that over the last number of years that Russia is really the one who's supplying all of these chemical uh, disaster uh, drugs. Well, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, let's face it. Is that true? Well, I don't know if they have to. These chemicals have been around since World War One, you know, well, and they're basically, know. basically, if I'm not mistaken, Mark, you, you seem to be agreeing with me on this. I, I think it's chlorine, basically, isn't it? Yeah. That they use. Yeah, it's, it's nasty stuff or some variation. Yeah. Chlorine and sarin. You know, yes. I mean, I if, between you and me, let me be very honest about it. Uh, you know, what's the difference between using chemical warfare and dropping an atomic bomb? I mean. It, the result is the same. I mean, it's all terrible. Well, for, the, for that one person, yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say, Mark? You leave the structures and infrastructure intact, Alex. That's the only difference. Um, I'm wondering why in all the years there's never been a diplomatic solution ever found in that area. And it's just, you know, kind of disgusting. Well, we've kind of agreed, haven't we, worldwide, that... Uh, uh, the terms of warfare are you don't use chemical weapons. Yeah, well, yeah, the Geneva Convention, hello. Uh, That's when more uh, rational people were in charge. Today, we have a lot of radicals in charge. No, nah, we have thugs in charge, to Rob. Thugism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the question is, uh, how do we, what do we, uh, uh, is, is, you know, how do we stop Syria? In other words, is what we're doing now going in and bombing the answer, or are there other answers that we can, that we can, you know? I mean, I don't think I have a, a reasonable uh, strategy, but, but one strategy would be put the dirty uh, chemicals in the president's office. In, in in Trump's office? No, in, oh, in the uh, press. Oh, in, oh, oh it, in, a, in a, yeah, Assad's. Damn, but, damn, I thought you had a really good idea for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> well, you know, sometimes a, a mistake could be a, a better than uh, any strategy at all. Right? That's right. I mean, you missed that president. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. This is, this is going to be the hardest one of the night. I know that there probably is not to a single person here who is pro-Trump, right? Do I, am I, am I pretty correct in that assumption? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, yes. What? Yes, we're pro-Trump. <laughs> I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. I know. I know. Uh, so my question is: can, Let's try to be complimentary for a moment. Is is, is there? <laughs> look, One, look, two, look look at three. Mark. Right, He's he, he, Mark is doing mime here for people listening to us just on the audio version. But it was a big no from him. <laughs> um, but my question is. Is there something he's done so far that was good? Is there anything he's done in the last year and three months that it's been good? Yes, uh, Tom. 
Uh, actually, they just passed a sex trafficking bill that's, that's been getting a lot of praise, and he signed it. So it's one of the real few accomplishments he's had in the last uh, year, and that's just a few days ago. Was that a hard one? Did he bring that one about, or did, did, did Congress decide that that was a good idea and pass that through, and then he just signed it? Oh, that's a good question. I just, I'm assuming he just signed it. I, yeah, I yeah. I mean, question. was it something where I never heard him give a speech about sex trafficking? Okay. You know. Yeah. Yes. So he needs one more good idea because right now he's behind the broken clock. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Twice a day. Uh, right. What about what about the tax uh, break? Oh my God! <laughs> Who's going to pay for that? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm I'm just saying, is that a so possibility we're, 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 that that was something that was good? And you ask uh, a lot of Americans, they'll say, "Oh yeah, it was great. I'm going to get two thousand dollars more a year in my pocket." Penny, penny, penny. And the fact of the matter is, you've already paid for it, and the fact that your four hundred one k went to hell, you know. There goes your, there goes your two thousand dollars, pal. What? And your deductions went away. Look, if you get the two k back, it'll be for one year. You'll be paying for it the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys get the. Uh, you're you're still in New York. Are you guys still in New? You guys, you guys still in New York? No, they're in no, 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 no. Oh, you're in uh, Annapolis, right? Yeah. Right. Annapolis, yeah. I th I thought I heard you say earlier that you lived in like White Plains or something. No. I mean, Oh, okay. Okay. Because I know my brother's going to suffer now because his taxes are like fifteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a year on no, long taxes. Maryland is not a low tax state. No. Yeah. My taxes are like two thousand dollars a year, so it doesn't matter to me. Well, They're, then you got Mark who lives in Florida, where you're pretty well. I, I was told by Albert the other night that he's pretty well tax free when it comes to property taxes and things like that, right, Mark? You, 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 pay, your, you pay your property tax, okay? That's, but we don't have a city. We don't have a state tax. But what state is that? Florida, but it's still Florida. But uh, Florida. and they can't repossess your home, right? Um, something down there where they can't repossess a home. I mean, if you know, that that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, yeah, that's. And I think your primary domicile doesn't count in terms of counting uh, when it comes to benefits as well. Yeah, yeah, they can't count that as against you in terms of. Uh, yeah, yes, Jeff. Your assets. What I understand about Florida is uh, once you get to be uh, over sixty-five. Yeah. Uh, and if you have to go to the hospital, yeah, you just die. That's it. What? You're dead. <laughs> their doctors and their medication stuff and their hospitals are pretty crappy. Where? Down in Florida? Yeah. Is that true, Mark? Not necessarily. I mean, yeah, I've heard that there's been some horror stories. I... But if you're near uh, a university hospital, teaching hospital, you're you're pretty good. Yeah, but well, then why are fucking old people moving there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that would seem to me like, well, I'm going to go down there because I want to die. I'm going to I'm going to commit doctor assisted suicide. You know. That's right. But it's cheap. It's cheap. <laughs> but it's cheap. Seinfeld says you have to. It's the law. I'll tell you this winter. I, you know, I'm not one of those Jews who wants to move to Florida, but I'm beginning to realize <laughs> as you get older, uh, uh, after a winter like this one that we just had, which was just <laughs> went, you know, it kept going until a few days ago, all right? You think, eh, maybe Florida isn't a bad idea, you know? It's warm in Israel. <laughs> it's warm <laughs> where? Israel. Oh, I wouldn't Israel. move there and save my life. Uh, what? What? Yes, Mark. I made a comment to you. I think last week or the week before. Well, when you did the live during the day, snow the snow cam. Yeah, yeah. Um, By the way, I got more viewers watching that than watch this show in a week. Okay, just watch. I, it was, watch the and then oh, then I also the second part of it was watch the snow melt. And snow melting got some big numbers for me. You got to paint the wall. Well, I've been thinking about I was thinking about doing a, a board or something and just saying, okay, now watch paint dry and run that. It's we'll do that. We'll, now, so you can, we'll do all those out of the. What? 
in springtime, you could do grass growing. Grass yeah. growing, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you could actually see the snow melt. They started dripping, you know, and you could see the drips coming down. Then you could see the streets that were getting a little wet, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I figure that's it's what I call slow TV. I want to start a whole thing called slow TV. There, I haven't started it. There's a, in Europe, I think in Sweden, they have a thing called slow TV, and it's things just like that. Watch the grass grow. Watch the paint dry. Uh, you know, I, who knows? I could, get, I could do really well on YouTube with that. Yes, Mark. Yeah, but I don't know if you were still in New York back then, but do you remember we had one winter where... It snowed May 1st. I hear about that. I, do, I don't know if I was here when that happened. Yeah, it really happened. <laughs> it was, of course, the next day the snow was gone, but the fact that you got to be kidding me, it snowed in May. Yeah, but here it snowed last week, and this yeah. was the beginning, you know, it was the beginning That's of right. April. Uh, you know, you, you, you what you want is... Once the vernal equinox happens, it's the vernal equinox that I'm thinking of, uh, and it's it's the it's the twenty uh, first of, of March or whatever. You expect yeah. spring to arrive, yeah. and instead, all I had went outside. I could hear. Uh, normally, you would hear birds chirping. I heard birds coughing. Okay, <laughs> I mean it was just miserable out there, and fucking cold. And then girlfriend would say to me, did you get out today? And I'd go, why? And she said, well, you know, to get out. And I said, it's fucking freezing out there. Why should I go out there? I got a warm little apartment here. I got, uh, uh, you know, 16, what is it, 2,500 square feet of space in here. What do I need to go outside for in that fucking cold? Well, you should go out. It'd be nice if you took a walk. I go, well, that would be nice, too. You know, but I plan to never walk again. So, uh, anyway, yes, Dan. Uh, speaking of apartments, do they still have rent control? In the yes, they. Well, no, they don't have rent control anymore. They do have rent control. There is, there are some apartments which are grandfathered into rent control, um, but I can't remember how many years ago they went to rent stabilized. So, if you had a rent controlled apartment and you were in it, you got to keep it as a rent controlled apartment. And what that meant, you didn't have to leave it necessarily. If you died, you could actually, in your will, will it to somebody else. Yeah. I remember that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I met a woman here who was born in an apartment here in 1935, and she still lives in that apartment because it was her. willed to her over the years. And her rent is something like $800 a month or something ridiculous for like the same size apartment I've got here. Then there's rent stabilization. That's a, that was the newer thing, and that it still keeps the rent low. But uh, there are ways that you know landlords can weasel out of it, or uh, you know figure ways around it, and so on. Like we're in the middle of a fight. We haven't paid rent here in uh, August. It'd be I think five years. Oh crap! <laughs> we haven't paid rent. But, uh, hey, just. Get this whole court deal over with. Tell us how much we're supposed to pay. We'll send you a, a rent uh, uh, every month. But until then, I don't have a lease with anybody, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have, uh, you know, I don't know what the rent's going to be. What I send the rent to, you know, midair. I, I have nowhere where to send it. So just tell me when you guys stop fighting about all of this, how much I'm going to owe every month, and I'll send you a check. And Who's tell me fighting? what, huh? Who are the parties that are fighting? Well, here's, here's what happened. This is a very simple, it's not a simple story. We rented this apartment from a guy who said, hey, you want to rent it? I said, well, how much? And we paid $4,200 a month. Okay, all right, it's fine with us, $4,200 a month. Uh, all of a sudden, about three years in, he gets a thing saying, uh, 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 notice to cure. Uh, you have some people you're renting, you're leasing your apartment out to, or you're renting, subletting your apartment out to, uh, and uh, you haven't lived in that apartment in so many years, and we want you to get out of there unless you get rid of them. 
So one thing led to another, and we said, we're not going anywhere. And we went and got ourselves a good lawyer. And what it turns out is this guy couldn't, we didn't sublet this apartment. We signed a lease for this apartment. He signed as a landlord. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only person we owe money to is him on that lease. But then all of a sudden it turns out he has no right to lease an apartment. It's rent stabilized. He can only sublet it, and for a period of no more than two years, at the same price he's paying for rent. And he was charging us $2,000 more a month than he was paying for rent on the apartment. So you get what's happened here. We don't have a lease with the landlord. We don't really have a, a legal lease with him. So this then goes to court. We get a great lawyer. They get a good lawyer. The landlords are, he's suing us, the landlords and us. And it's just been going around and around. And we're sitting around with our finger up our ass for five years. We, we would have been happy to settle it in six months. But no, this thing has been dragging on like, uh, like uh, you know, forever. And uh, that's, that's the, the situation we're in. And we're, you know, we feel that we should pay about $1,500 a month for this apartment because that's what it would be rent stabilized. And we want the apartment in our name because we are actually the residents of this apartment we're here but we're, we're squatters basically until they decide how they're going to solve the problem and uh you know we never signed a, a lease to the landlord so we don't owe anybody money you know but we're willing to start paying as soon as you can figure out who we send the check to and how much it's going to be and we also want something like uh 200 $250,000 for our trouble because part of the thing of leasing an apartment illegally uh, 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 as a, uh, that isn't a sublet saying it's a lease and when it should be a sublet, uh, what we get is the difference between what he was paying and what we were paying trebled. Okay? Uh, and I figure that out once to come to, if, they, if he were to get his rent lower to what his effective rent would be and get money back. I, we could get $400,000 in all of this, you know, but I don't see that we're going to get if that. If you find a judge that's going to award you trouble damages. Yeah. Huh? Uh, if you find a judge. No, you will. You find, it is, it's specific in the law that if, if, if it's what's called illusory tenancy, and if you engage in it, uh, you owe treble damages to the, to the parties that you uh, that you aggrieved, so it goes on and on and on and on, and we paid rent. We paid fifty thousand dollars in insurance in uh, lawyers' fees, so it's been about a thousand dollars a month. So you know, what the hell? But that's what we've been going through, and this just goes on and on and on. And what I and is your, huh? Is your insurance company okay with this? I have no. What, what insurance company? Uh, did you have it? The things in your apartment insured? Oh, yeah, yeah. We have, we have homeowner's insurance, of course, you know, if anything goes wrong in the apartment. But that's on the stuff that's here. Uh, so you have squatter's insurance. I have squatter's <laughs> insurance, yeah. No, but the thing is, you know, what I think about is, and this is what worries me, is that, okay, so we have a way of, of paying for it. She has, uh, Marjorie owns an apartment, and so she has home equity she can get out of that that we're using to pay the lawyers with, and we're paying that back, and... You know, we, we have the wherewithal to f see out this whole process. But what about people who don't, you know? Somebody who gets screwed just like we got screwed, and they can't afford uh, to pay uh, a lawyer the kind of money we're paying, and, and to have the landlord stalling the process, and this third, this other guy stalling the process, and, uh, you know, having it just crawl through the court for five years. What about those people who can't afford that? What happens to them? And, well, and, and shouldn't, America. huh? Welcome to America. I mean, that's well, true. Welcome to America. Shouldn't, you don't have the money. You're, you're on the short end of it. Shouldn't right. those people have the right, you know, to, to good representation to get this thing taken care of? And shouldn't we have the right to see it happen in a timely and uh, fashion rather than stalling over five years? You know, it'll be five years in... Uh, It'll be five years. It, actually, this month is five years of not paying rent. Hmm. You know, um, 
And, I, 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 you know, you just say, hey, come on, you know, we're, we're just the innocent parties here. We didn't do anything wrong, okay? Uh, but can't you speed this up just a little bit? And then I got a thing over Christmas from the law firm that we're dealing with, and they said the year end about here's the wonderful things that have happened this year and how they settled one of these illusory tenancy cases. And they said, yes, it took us eight years, but we did it. <laughs> and I went, oh, fuck. You know, uh, is it going to be eight years? You know, I just want to know that I have an apartment here, you know, and that I can fix stuff up if I want to. But I have a tendency not to because, you know, who knows if I'm going to, I know we'll be here. I know we're going to prevail, but it's just when, you know, it just goes on and on and on. So, I mean, what happens to people in this world who don't have the ability to defend themselves legally? We have a law system that makes it impossible for anybody to get justice. Oh, yeah, I guess you can go get yourself some kind of pro bono lawyer somewhere who handles this kind of stuff. And then he, he just throws you to the wolves and, you know. They, they end up broke and they end up homeless. Exactly. Happens. Exactly. And, and so it, it bothers me a, a great deal, not because I just want to go, I want to find the judge and just shake them and say, we speed this thing up just a little bit, you know? Uh, and, and the last thing was that we, we had this big court thing because uh, it, I don't even want to go into it. The guy we rented from is saying that he wants a, 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 a summary judgment by the landlord to say that he wins, you know, without having to actually present evidence. So no. we, we, everybody went in and argued everything and we went down and watched it and, you know, uh, why he shouldn't get the summary judgment, blah, 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 blah. And uh, we go home and they say, okay, we will come back on the 13th or something of March. And we'll... so 13th of March comes and goes. We don't hear anything. And I could, we get a hold of my lawyer. Oh, yeah, the judge wants to read the transcripts. You know, <laughs> go, yeah, slow this fucking thing down one more time, you know. So I've gotten to the point where I just don't give a shit. <laughs> You know, well, I know we'll come out okay. It's just a matter of how okay, you know. But, I mean, this goes on and on and on and on and on. I don't need it, you know. I'm an old man. What do I need this stuff for, you know? Um, uh, I, I mean, it came at a fortuitous time because I was no longer working at Sirius and no longer had an income coming in, and all of a sudden I'm not paying, having to pay rent. That was a nice deal. Okay, you know, so I'm not going to argue about that. But, you well, know. You get to deduct those legal fees, too, don't you? I don't know if you can deduct legal fees. Um, In some circumstances, you can. I just I, don't I, 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 can. I'm trying to remember. There are certain circumstances where you can, but I don't think you can in something like this. Especially, uh, and if you get awarded a, um, I, I was asking my business manager well what if we win and we get a like a nice settlement like say three hundred thousand dollars he's oh you have to pay taxes on that yeah yeah of course I I, 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 but, but 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 it's a settlement it's it's a settlement for my troubles okay shouldn't that be tax free no no you know so i mean even if i win this thing i lose you know so well, you don't win as much you don't win as much. Sam should have, Uncle Sam should have to pay part of your court costs if you don't win then. You know something? You got a good point there. You know? Um, uh, well, he is, but you're paying the judge yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and then let's say I get a big settlement from this guy, okay? What's to say I'm ever going to be able to collect it? That's the next problem. Go get, go collect it. More lawyers. Huh? Like OJ. More lawyers. More lawyers. Like OJ, the, 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 the Goldman family never co collected anything. Right, oh, right. That's right. They spent all that money and uh, collected nothing. There are a lot of ways to hide your money. I mean, like the guy, the, uh, this guy who had so-called so leased us the apartment and signed on as landlord, uh, he bought a new house. Maybe it's in his wife's name, not in his name. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Sneak out of it that way, you know. I mean, it, it, it's just that it, it, first thing you got to win. Second thing is you got to collect, and that's a lot harder. As I say, ask the Goldmans. Mm -hmm. It's a good example, very good example. Um, 
Although I, I think he should be allowed to keep his Heisman trophy. Okay? You know. <laughs> no matter what happens to me, I'm keeping Miami's. Okay? You know. Especially the sports one. Especially the sports one. I'm so proud of the sports Emmy. <laughs> you know, people have asked me to give up that sports Emmy. Saying, how could you possibly win a sports Emmy? I won it fair and square, motherfuckers. <laughs> Right. I'm not giving it back because I like I always used to like to go seriously I just like to go to the sports department and say hey you want me to go do a show for you he said but you don't know anything about sports I said no but I have a sports Emmy you're an Emmy sports Emmy award winning a, a award Emmy award winning sportscaster yeah that's right yeah and, and and I also have another Emmy for performing so I'm an Emmy award winning Alex Bennett <laughs> Do you know how many people have Emmys in this world between the local Emmys and the national Emmys? These things are a dime a fucking dozen, all right? I'm surprised mine are still all in one piece. I've gone to people's homes where their, their Emmys fell apart, you know? And, and you can't say that about the Oscars. The Oscars are solid. I don't know if you've ever held an Oscar. I have. And they're solid, damn it. They, they, you could kill somebody with an Oscar. All right. But the Emmys are built in such a way that they have so many different places they can break off, you know, that you got to put it in a case and just leave it there. And even at one TV station, I saw they had a bunch of local Emmys in a case and they had just fallen apart sitting in the fucking case. <laughs> I want an on. Huh? That's the difference in commitment between television and the th and movies. Mm hmm. Television commitment is very short term. They cut you off right away. Right. With the Emmys, you know, once you've started a movie, you've committed a long budget to it. You're pretty much stuck. Yeah. So, yeah. So the I'm saying, so the Oscars represent the movie part, but the Emmys go to TV. Yeah. I, I and I love how I love how they have these these various you know uh, uh, statues. Uh, um, the one for SAG. After him, the SAG Awards is uh, I think it's a, it's a it's isn't it a it's a uh, oh it's a statue of a guy holding a happy face and a sad face or something. <laughs> now you know, come it's, on, I I don't that that the arms will fall off. You know, I mean, it just it doesn't work. Now the <laughs> BAFTAs in England have a happy face and a sad face, but they're it's like a mask right on the on the on the trophy so it, there's nothing to fall apart there but you know uh and uh i you know i just i yes jeff my, my daughter and her husband i think between both of them they have eight of them that they've uh, won awards uh, i mean won awards yeah for the same kind of thing uh, not emmys 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 yeah they, they've won how many Eight. Are they national or local? No, they're most in Boston. Yeah, that's local. Yeah, they're, they're smaller. But they're Probably. Emmys. They're, they're Emmys. Small ones and big ones. I don't know. I when I went to one of the Emmy Emmy <laughs> Emmy uh, award shows that I won at, there was one guy I can't remember what his name was, but if I said it, Tom, because he's from the Bay Area, probably know the name. The guy won eight awards that night. Eight of them. And as he's, the, the ceremonies are over, he's, he's got all of them at the table and he's trying to lift them all. <laughs> and he looks at people around him and says, can somebody help me get these to the car? And we all looked at him and went, fuck you. <laughs> get a shopping cart. Yeah, go get, go get a shopping bag or something. Yes, Tom. Well, by the way, um, uh, speaking of, of uh, the uh, Screen Actors Guild, uh, just reminded me of an obituary I just saw today. Um, if you'd like a visit from the Crypt Keeper. Uh, but a man named Eugene Francis uh, died at the age of 100. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was noted for, um, uh, for appearing in the East Side Kids. Which was uh, preceded the uh, the Bowery Boys, the Bowery Boys, and uh, I guess it was later the um, Dead End Kids. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. First, they were the Dead End Kids. Dead End Kids, and then then it was the East Side, and then the East Side and then Kids, and then it was the Bowery Boys. 
Yeah. Or was but it? He yeah. Also, he was in 1985. He was elected a founding board member of the Street Actors Guild Foundation, and he served for 33 years as a board member, including a stint as treasurer, until his death. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> there's Mr. Obituary. There, he 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 always puts on his uh, Facebook page everybody that dies. Well, it's actually my Twitter. Is so, your Twitter? And, and my yeah. Twitter, everything I post on my Twitter it ends up on the Facebook. But if you if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Tom Yamaguchi, and uh, you can get get a link to this uh, to this uh, great obituary. Really well, we lo lost my old friend Chuck McCann. This week, uh, yeah, and uh, did you mention Mitzi Shore? Mit oh, I didn't mention Mitzi mention <laughs> Mitzi Shore, but Mitzi Shore was the uh, was the woman who ran the uh, the uh, um, a comedy store down in L.A. Her son is Paulie Shore. Right. She was married to Sammy Shore, who was a comic, uh, and uh, she ran the place. And if you ever ever saw the thing on Showtime about the comedy club, that woman in there who was supposed to be running it like a with a hot iron fist is supposed to be Mitzi Shore. But Mitzi, uh, Mitzi was responsible for, you know, a lot of comedians getting their start, but they were, she was also responsible for taking advantage of them by saying, I shouldn't have to pay you to be here. You're learning by being here. You know, I'm giving you a chance to be seen by the industry here. So there's no reason why I should pay any of the comics. So they all went on strike once, and finally she agreed to pay them a moderate fee to appear at her club. So I don't know if we remember Mitchie Shore for all the good she did in discovering comics or the fact that she took great advantage of them. So, you know, you never know. But uh, Chuck McCann was, in case most people don't know, he was a television personality here in New York, very big television personality. And uh, uh, you've seen him, I'm sure, one time or another. His most famous thing was there was a Gillette commercial where he oh opens God. up his medicine cabinet and on right the guard. right guard was it right guard, and on the other side was Groucho uh, Marx. Yeah. Hey, was guy. Groucho Marx. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guy. Yeah. Yes, uh, Tom. Well, I remember we said it. He was the uh, the the uh, Co Cuckoo Puffs bird. I'm Coco uh, for Cuckoo Puffs. Yeah. yeah. He was, wasn't he? I forgot that. Yeah. 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 Cuckoo for Cuckoo Puffs. Yeah. And he was also in a really bizarre movie I remember seeing a long time ago. Um, Heart is a Lonely Hunter. Yes. On Arkin. Probably the most depressing movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and, and, and actually a turn that he did that was dramatic, which was kind of an interesting thing for him because he didn't usually do dramatic roles. You know? Right. And he was the founder of uh, an organization called the Sons of the Desert, which is a Laurel and Hardy fan club. Right. Who just uh, paid a tribute to him this week uh, upon his death because he was the founding one of the founding fathers of that particular organization, because he did a, a wonderful uh, Oliver Hardy, and he also did a wonderful Stan Laurel, which yeah, was... The puppets. Huh? His he, puppets. Puppets. The, yeah. the Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy puppets, and they, did the, they played the Laurel and Hardy shorts during that program. It was a kid yeah. show on WPIX. And, and I said yeah. last night that I, didn't, I wasn't here for any of that, so when I knew Chuck, it, yeah. I wasn't that amazed to know Chuck McCann, you know. Yes, uh, Mark. He uh, was friends with uh, Stan Laurel. Yes, he was. Age, age 12 until Stan Laurel's death in 64. Wow. Yeah. 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 He would call him, write him, and they had a very good friendship. And Chuck really almost single-handedly prevented uh, Laurel and Hardy from going into obscurity. Uh, yeah. Let me let me just tell you a quick story that he told me, and then we got to go. In fact, I'm playing the theme song right now. But that he liked to do Stanton Laurel or Oliver Hardy, and uh, he was then somebody bought all the rights to Laurel and Hardy and told him he couldn't do it. So he had to stop doing his impression of Stan Laurel or Oliver was that Hardy. Larry Harmon. Yeah. Yes. What's his name? Larry Harmon. Yeah. Larry he, Yep. who also tries to convince us he was a bozo the clown well bozo the clown, right. yeah he 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 owned the bozo the clown thing though that yeah. was his thing so anyway that uh, but hey we've run out of time this has been a nice night just one of those kind of really nice and and please uh dan and and louise we want to hear from you again okay 
You know? We'll try. Yeah. We love it. What? We're here with the Alpha Cockers. Yeah, yeah. Well, please call us because I know Louise writes me all the time, and now she can talk to me. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Dan and Louise, and thanks, of course, to Rob Alfano. Uh, would you all wave goodbye, please? Because people would like to yeah, see them. They love you. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh, that's it for our uh, our group tonight. That's it for our citizens panel. Kind of just a nice night tonight. Just a bunch of people being very friendly and, you know, talking trash about the president as always. Anyway, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, we're uh, we're out of here. Uh, the intersection is next with Jack and Amy. Uh, follow at, at 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern Daylight Time by Connections coming out of Florida. Uh, we'll see you after Damien's show at uh, 9.30 on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.